So phase diagrams um, interrelate the states of matter um, with both temperature and pressure. So if we look at our example um, down below of our phase diagram, um, we have multiple components. Okay, so um, the first thing we have here is our vapor pressure curve. So this red curve here um, shows us uh, the equilibrium that's occurring between the liquid and gas phase. Okay, um, the uh, green curve here is representing um, the sublimation curve and basically separating your solid and your gas phase. Okay, and then this is our uh, melting curve, which separates our solid and liquid phase. Now the curve is going to be dictated by the substance that you're looking at, okay, so um, as well as the pressure and the temperature of that substance. So depending on what pressure you're at and what temperature you're at, that's going to dictate what phase of matter um, you are actually in. Okay, now when we're along one of the curves, okay, we're basically representing the presence of both the solid and the liquid or the liquid in the gas or um, the solid in the gas. So basically that equilibrium or that change is being represented on those actual curves. Now, um, at the point where the three curves intersect, that's known as the triple point, okay? And that's where all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, um, are being represented or are present um, in equilibrium. And of course, anytime you're looking at anywhere away from the actual curves themselves, you're in whatever phase is being represented in that specific region. Now, the critical point, uh, remember, is going to uh, represent, once again, that um, temperature and pressure uh, at which you um, are at the last ditch effort of having a liquid phase. Okay, so remember your critical temperature and pressure, that's when you have that liquid um, in its last ditch effort before it moves on to supercritical fluids, which um, we're not going to discuss in great detail, um, or we're not going to discuss really at all uh, in this course. But um, hopefully you understand the points along this curve. Uh, now let's go ahead and let's look at a couple of uh, specific curves. Okay, so on the left we have the um, phase diagram for H2O. Okay, and on the right we have the phase diagram for uh, CO2. Okay, and so um, if we go ahead and we look at our scale, okay, we have our pressures, okay, on the left-hand side, okay, 1 atm, or, you know, basically standard uh, pressure conditions. Uh, for H2O, if we go ahead and move all the way out, as we continue um, to increase our temperature, we're going to pass through the various uh, phases. So we're going to go from solid into the liquid and eventually into the gaseous phase as we um, maintain that constant pressure. So um, basically there's this nice uh, transition through all three phases of matter. And that's why when we look at our heating and cooling curve, um, or excuse me, our heating curve for H2O, you know, we see um, as we heat, you know, we go up to um, the melting point, we plateau out, um, basically enter into the liquid phase. As we go up through the liquid phase, um, we eventually reach the um, uh, boiling point, okay, and then we uh, plateau out, and then we in enter into the gaseous phase. So we see this process at a constant um, temperature, or excuse me, constant pressure of 1 atm. As we increase that temperature, as we keep adding heat, we're subsequently going to move into the various phases, okay? Um, so we know that water goes from the solid to liquid to gas phase, okay? Now CO2, which is a substance that sublimates at atmospheric uh, pressure, okay, and at that 1 atm that we um, typically reference. If you look at its phase diagram, okay, as we begin to add heat at 1 atm, I want you to notice that as we go across and continue to heat, 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 we never actually go through the liquid phase, okay? And that's indicative of what we physically observe with CO2. Sub CO2 is a substance that sublimates. It goes directly from a solid to a gas. Um, that's what we see, and this phase diagram supports that fact. Now, if we were to increase the pressure significantly um, and continue uh, that heating process at a higher pressure, we could get the um, CO2 to move through the liquid phase and eventually into the gaseous phase um, in the same type of way that we observe with H2O. However, that's that's what we see happening. Okay, it's 
required in order to get that process to occur. So um, this is what we see. So um, we can also use the phase diagrams to you know, figure out what, what phase of matter will be at a specific temperature um, and specific pressure. Uh, so basically, um, there's lots of information that you can glean from uh, the uh, phase diagrams themselves.